This is a, a personal question, but what, what sources do each of you turn to for, um, uh, for seeking that kind of um, uh, enrichment, looking to sources of learning to enrich your understanding of love, but then ho hopefully see that work itself out into, into actions? Who do, you, who do you read? Who are you inspired by? In my case, I'm not sure. My first response was um, ongoing self-reflection is really important mm -hmm. um, because uh, one of the strange things about love, like with many other things, I can start off with really good intentions, like I'm helping my kids to do something. Be it begins with their best interest, but somewhere along the line it becomes my self-interest. Mm -hmm. I take over their project. So unless I'm kind of, kind of monitoring myself, um, I, my love gets twisted or distorted or malformed. Um, and so self-awareness is, yeah. is part of It sounds like just being mindful. Uh, mm -hmm. There's a, a rich work, work in psychology around mindfulness and uh, its ability to help um, improve our, our own well-being. But perhaps being mindful also improves others' well-being insofar as uh, we uh, can re remain reflective, as you say. And, and, but then I also want to turn it into, um, I'm primarily a Lutheran theologically, so I think Luther w um, was a profound psychologist among other things, but he talks about um, drawing on Paul's language of being baptized in Christ. Uh, Luther talks about this being an ongoing daily need uh, to be rebaptized. So I die with Christ, so I become aware of my uh, distorted, selfish uh, alterations of love, and I'll allow myself to die with Christ and be risen uh, to that. So that's the participation motif that's become more prominent in recent years in theology. It's also the cross, uh, which I think is kind of at the heart uh, of, of my understanding of, of love. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, dying and rising again on an ongoing basis uh, is part of how I think I become more loving. I think my answer to the resources is going to sound cliche, going to sound, yeah, I figured you'd say that, but I'll say it anyway, because mm -hmm. it, it really is true. Resources. Scripture. Uh, I think the Bible can help us. I'm not saying the Bible is consistently clear on this issue. There's some passages that I think do a poor job of reflecting what love ought to be like, but the overall message of Scripture, the preponderance of biblical passages, I find helpful, uh, particularly wise Christians in the Christian tradition, exemplars of love throughout history, um, contemporary science and theology and philosophy that explores these things. I spent a lot of time reading Alan's work and other people's work. Um, that is motivating for me, thinking through the issues. But then the practices, you know, being a part of a Christian community, I happen to be very uh, fortunate to be a part of a small church that does a very good job of loving me, my family, and others. Uh, participating in the typical worship and sacraments, all these kinds of things you'd, you'd expect a theologian to say. <laughs> but I say them because they really are true for me in my life. They really do make a difference. Um, that's not an exhaustive list, but those are the things that I draw upon often as I try to think through what love means and then live that consistently in my life. 